Hello, everybody. AOG Gaming here. Um, so we're going to continue talking about um, quantum fusion. Um, sorry, just fusion in general. I don't know why I said that. Um, but you guys have already seen my shorts. I already posted this a while on this. Um, and it was an idea that kind of developed what Helion already built. They're a private fusion company building different type of fusion. Um, so actually, I will go search that up real quick. So you guys can see. So Helion fusion reactor. Um, I'm going to see if they can just give me an image of it. So yeah, so basically they showed this in this video. Um, but yeah, so they create these rings of plasma, basically. They accelerate them. Um, they're spinning clockwise or counterclockwise, whatever. And then they shoot them towards each other after compressing them really tight in order to form this fusion ball. Um, pretty sure there was like a YouTube video on it, actually. So let's go check real quick because I do want to show you guys what they were talking about specifically. Um, so yeah, so Helion Fusion, yeah, that, that should work. Um, so yeah, this was about four months ago when they... Our generator. So Helion has two pathways to create Helium-3 for their primary fusion energy okay. reaction. So like, when deuterium and helium three back to here maybe. Redmond facility. Um, here we're staying in front of our sixth generation machine. We call this one. So sixth generation, they've been developing this for a while, so it's reliable. Okay, let's click on this so I can pause it um, when I need to. Nice to meet you. I'm Natasha, an underworld doc. No. Okay. Get ready to run. Really hate these ads, you know. Fifty players, only one. Into our generator. So Helion has two pathways to create Helium three which, for their primary fusion energy. Which is the tritium I was talking about in my last video. Um. Just very rare form of hydrogen to make that makes ideal fusion situations, but does not mean you have to use that as fuel. It just makes the chemistry and fusion so much easier. Energy reaction. When deuterium and helium three combine, they create helium four atom yep. and proton. Release. Okay, so proton. Three mega not neutral. electron volts. More than the seventeen point six mega electron volts released from deuterium and tritium reactions. And on a mass basis, four times more than a uranium. Okay, so that's six crazy. Mega electron volts released from Wait, so it's a three helium. Plus a deuterium, and you get a proton and a helium four. But deuterium, tritium. Um, a neutron seems like you got a neutron or neutron. Well, yeah, it's a neutron and helium four. So you basically get the same, but instead of a neutron, you get a proton. Deuterium and tritium reactions, and on a mass basis, four times more than a uranium fission reaction. Being so yeah, that's that just goes to show that if we had fusion bombs. They would be four times stronger than atomic bombs. Just, well, actually, no, because it's exponential as you, it, it would be a lot stronger. That's all you need to know. To generate your fuel right where you need it is a huge advantage. But David Kirtley had an interesting alternative. Um, it's a very good business case of you could do it that way. Or you could do it where you have one dedicated facility and all it does is fuse deuterium and make fuel and then put it in a bottle, separate it from okay. all the other, the other gases, and then ship that to your generators and have the generators just make electricity and not deal with the fuel processing. Um, I think that's a good outstanding business decision that we, we don't know. Yeah. Um, one of the things that you have to keep in mind is when you do the deuterium fusion, that's when you make the neutrons. So the neutrons come from the deuterium and the deuterium fusing together. Yeah. Um, and so there's some really maybe advantageous things of separating those two machines. 
One of those advantages is prolonging the life of our generator. Yeah. The high energy neutrons from the deuterium deuterium reaction can damage our generator. So yeah, neutrons are especially at high speeds are very destructive. Um obviously all subatomic particles are, but yeah, neutrons can mess you up. Um it's like almost like gamma radiation like it's just ridiculous um and you get one per collision and you have like billions i don't know maybe millions at least at least like hundreds of millions of collisions um so yeah just imagine that many neutrinos are sorry neutrons popping out and then basically changing the makeup of the wall making it weaker um knocking electrons out of place or things like that um yeah it's it's very bad so that that's one of the major issues with norm with the best like reaction we can get is the neutron um sorry the deuterium and tritium fusion with the proton um and then you get that well because it has that extra proton okay well you get what i'm trying to say it the other fusion with um tritium and deuterium is very good um but it can destroy the reactor slowly so it makes repair cost and all this stuff hard because commercializing fusion is what we're really trying to do like yes we can make a facility make fusion which we're already doing with the Ida project um but we really need to commercialize it because we can't just spend a billion dollars or 2.8 billion dollars or however much it was just to build a new reactor every single time because the governments don't care <laughs> like honestly if we had the money to do it and we did it problem solved like that's how simple it is but world is a little bit more complicated than that um let's continue i think they show you how it works for about generators because 80 percent of the energy in the deuterium tritium reaction is carried by the neutron yeah but the neutron generated two deuterium atoms fuse has five times less energy reducing the damage it can do however it produces a lot less damaged. energy if we could design yeah. a cheaper more robust reactor purely to create our fuel products that could be economically beneficial especially if there are multiple generators that all need fuel supplies replacing one fuel generator that can feed 10 energy generators is a lot cheaper than replacing 10 hybrid fuel and energy generators so there are many benefits from moving away from deuterium and tritium but the deuterium and helium-3 reaction does require higher temperatures yeah and this does pose an engineering challenge especially as helium progresses to their commercial scale reactor right now we're building polaris our seventh generation system uh the goal is that it so yeah that so that's the one thing i wanted to talk about too the reason I'm bringing up this other idea I've had of it is because you get these two rings, they collide and they, well, you can have them spin in the same direction, but can do it? Do they even show you how it works? Well, they do right here. But that's still so hot that it can't touch any of the walls without damaging material. Yeah. So it spins in a certain direction, as you can see. Um, the only problem with this is it creates angular momentum. So it's basically letting or it's giving more energy to the neutrons and all the matter that you're already spinning. And it's basically allowing it to get closer to the wall um, and maybe even, you know, shooting it faster. So it has a more penetrating power so it can actually damage the materials on a deeper level. Um, which is bad as well. Um, so my, um, you know, fixing to that, so let's go home real quick, is um, basically using two opposing rings. So they already do this, but they have the rings spinning in the same direction so that you get that, you know, added momentum. Because if they were spinning in the opposite direction, counterclockwise and clockwise, and you shot them towards each other, their spins would probably cancel out, um, which you would get, you know, the plasma would just diffuse. It wouldn't stay in its reading form. Um, 
what you don't want. You want the plasma to clump together um, so that the fusion can continue. That is the main problem with the plasma we are creating today. It's not as dense as it should be. Um, and this is mostly due to the fact that we're not using gravity or an insane amount of mass like the sun does to compress all of this plasma together and then fuse it so that it continues producing energy. Um, which is why we, I think we need to incorporate some sort of gravity onto our object. It doesn't have to be super massive. Um, because you can always add more energy to what I'm dubbing a mini sun or whatever. Um, so basically what this would do is with the op opposite spinning um, plasma rings shooting towards each other in um, California, Livermore, whatever the, the um, institute was called, they had the record breaking for... Um, putting power into fusion and gaining more power than they put in. So this is, was the, like a big spark. I forgot what it was to deliver more. Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Ignition. There we go. So this is the ignition stage or what I like to call pulse fusion because they technically did do a fusion reaction and it was a pulse. So it lasted for a certain amount of time and it dissipated and it went away, but they still produced more energy than you put in. And this is what's really important because that amount of concentrated energy on a small spot can create insane amounts of heat, um, which is perfect for these rotating rings to collide onto this pellet, basically. So they have like a little fusion pellet and then there's like a dome and uh, I'll see if they have images. Yeah, so basically it's a pellet inside a dome and they just shot it with um, lasers. And they basically were able to fix the first part of um, fusion, which is getting more energy than you put in. Now, the second part is stabilizing that so that you continue to get more energy out of the reaction that you already created. Um, so slowing down the fusion reaction but not on a chemical level but on a um i guess you're not slowing down the atoms themselves you're just slowing well you're not slowing anything down really in fact you're speeding everything up so after the rings collide so let me just show you guys real quick um so basically after the rings collide um into the mini explosion, which would have most of the energy that you need for the initial fusion to start. Um, these rings would rotate the um, plasma ball that you just ignited. And because they're spinning in opposite directions, they actually end up rotating this plasma a little bit. Um, induce spinning clockwise. Well, it can be counterclockwise or cl clockwise, depending on how you set up the experiments. Um, but mostly it's the spinning parts and we can aid this spinning motion um, with the um, static flux quantum lock magnet I was talking about. So basically it goes in towards the center and it compresses all of that plasma so that the fusion reaction can continue going and you're getting all of those collision, guaranteed collision, well, you know, you're getting all those collisions so that you get more energy and you can sustain the fusion. Now the second part is the um, actual spinning, which I kind of showed in just a little circle here. So I didn't show it on the first part, but yes, you're going to need to spin your plasma, mini plasma sun basically. Um, and then once you get this mini, like you get it spinning, you have to spin it to the point where um, gravity, like it creates its own gravity dip. Now, I don't know what the exact calculations for this would be, um, but basically this reactor is kind of mimicking what already happens with um, like in space when stars are being formed, when a lot of material gathers and then it sort of collapses in on each other. Um, it's kind of like that, but 
I mean, if we probably did this in space, it would probably be easier, but we're also, you know, we're, we need to do this on Earth. I don't understand what, why that just went away, but okay. Um, I think I actually clicked. But guiding the plasma like this gives us a different way to not only fuse plasma together, but now that this guy was talking about um, the different types of fusion you can have, different yields you can get, and different, more important, the most important part is the different products. So those neutrons or protons that you produce, um, mostly neutrons through most of the fusion reactions, but now you can have three separate, basically, pockets of highly dense plasma with maybe different types of um energy sources but i don't know how that would work so like imagine if these on the side were made with um helions uh deuterium and helium three or three helium um particle and then you'd get the uh, neutron and helium four same principle that happens in um deuterium and tritium fusion so you would get well i guess it's it wouldn't really matter because no it would i think you would have to use the same fuel for all three or at least the same for the two rings and then different for the center um just to keep the reaction as simple as possible so that there's no energy loss or there's no like other factors that you have to calculate um but honestly i i don't know how well this would work so there's definitely lots of um experimentation but you know private companies out there that are doing uh energy research yeah just um hit me up and uh <laughs> i can show you guys that i'm working on and also um so like these little see it, it, it keeps doing this i'm not even touching the screen so go back to straight um so those little circles i have on the side that are spinning in opposite directions i believe yes um are magnets um to continue spinning um to continue spinning it so it's basically adding or it's it's stopping the um these rings of plasma here from losing most of the momentum from just clashing into the plasma ball and then transferring that energy through the fusion collisions um keeps going sideways so yeah, this this definitely needs a lot of testing, a lot of theory stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have everything here. Like, it's basically like every other reactor. Um, any tokamak reactor mixed with Helion's reactor. You got to make the chamber a little bit bigger because you are fusing... Um, you are, um, sorry, housing a very... Um, you're going to need a, a lot of room for the sun because it's going to be very dense, very hot, and it's going to continue. Um, the reason I say this is because there haven't been any um, stabilized fusion reactions, so we don't know what the rate... We could probably calculate it, but we don't know what the rate of degeneration to the walls of the fusion reactor is or um, the heat because the heat is going to build up because all of the um, radioactivity and just the thermal energy coming off of the sun is going to be blasting those um, walls. Um, and yeah, you, they use uh, liquid nitrogen to cool down those magnets. Um, you can also use water and use the um, heat from that water to power the steam turbine, um, which would be how you convert the energy that you get from the reaction um, into a viable electricity, basically. Um, so I think that's all I have to say about fusion reactors so far, because um, I do want to release that video, continue talking about those quantum processors, because I do have a good idea of how a quantum computer, what a, what a quantum computer should have in order for it to um, properly entangle any amount of qubits um, and also convert those signals between um, 
photonic to electrical signals because, um, well, you need the um, interface. Like, um, we don't have quantum LEDs. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but basically when you're doing quantum mechanics, when you're getting all this information for quantum mechanics, it's hard to convert it into um, information that a computer can display on a screen, basically. Um, you do get simulations, so like you can get readings from sensors, but it's hard to like get all these readings from the sensors and they'll do something. So like, I don't know, doing like an algorithm um, on the computer, like it's different on how far we've gone with quantum. Um, but I do think that because, sorry, going a little off topic here, we're done with the fusion part of the video, so you guys can leave if you want. Um, I do have that post that's short from a while ago, so go watch that if you want more in-depth in information on the first part that I talked about, but I was mostly talking about the second part and just what I think would be a good way to not only contain the plasma, but then start to introduce um, rotational physics into the plasma so that it starts um, compressing on itself because the fact that we need to keep it contained in a um, basically just in, in a magnet well, um, I guess magnetic well, um, well, just to keep the sun, the plasma from floating because I mean, I don't know if this, the sun is charged, right? But it releases a ton of particles that are different charges. So it's, it's going to be interesting because the sun has different chemicals. It's not just tritium and deuterium. Um, so the sun that we're recreating is, would be an artificial sun. So it would be very pure. Um, so I feel like controlling the way the plasma moves and how it will settle is a lot easier because now you just have to take into the account the, um, the chaos that happens in fusion, but you don't have to take into account all the different materials that you're going into the fusion because you just have, well, you do, but like the sun has more than just helium um, on its surface or just in general, the sun has more than just helium gas. Um, but yeah, it, it's just going to be an interesting, um, it's going to be interesting because in order to calculate all of those collisions and make sure that the sun is being stabilized, I'm like 70% sure, maybe 60% sure we're going to need quantum computing to make it easier. I'm not saying it's impossible without quantum computing. It definitely is. Um, I mean, Helion already has one part of it. And then the Livermore reactor in California already has a second part of it. So now they just trade their information um, build a new reactor, um, generation eight, I guess for helion. Cause they're already building their generation seven. Um, yeah. And you do have to have that, um, quantum locked magnets, um, because it allows you for super easy spinning and second of all, it will keep your, um, your sun afloat because you can basically think of it as a giant magnet. Um, and the problem with that as well, having a mini sun is that it'll be attracted to the earth as well. So it'll try and touch the bottom of your reactor, melt through it, and then bad stuff happens. Um, which is why you need that constant magnetic levitation so that the sun doesn't dip down. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it though. I mean, I do have a lot of fancy drawings, but um, the way I'm explaining it, it's just pretty simple. There's going to be lots of um, magnets and wires and a lot of math and physics that involves that in order to basically guide the plasma perfectly um, and have no energy loss. So there's two different ways to lead charged particles uh, with a magnetic field. You can either lead them or you can push them. Um, Leading them basically means that 
a part of your magnetic field. We're talking about um, manipulatable uh, uh, magnetic fields that you can increase the power of by just increasing the energy. Um, so an electromagnets, more specifically. But um, yeah, so you would increase the energy basically as you pull towards the center. And um, I think you would want to push the plasma rather than pull it. So the pool would basically be you increase the energy um, ahead of the charged particles and you make it the opposite charge so that the particles are basically attracted to go forward towards that um, increase in uh, mag an increase in the magnetic um, field that is attracting those particles and then you basically smash those two magnetic fields that are coming towards each other from opposite directions and then that'll bring the um, particles i think pushing is a little bit better because you have to stay close enough to the um, charged matter particles whatever plasma that you're pulling with that magnetic field um, before you go faster and faster or you like you know start basically um, increasing the velocity that these magnetic fields are going towards each other so that the um, two different sets of plasma rings are also accelerating faster towards each other. Um, but the pushing is probably the easier because it doesn't matter. You basically just make like a wall of magnetism behind the charged particles and you can push them as fast as you want. Um, stability becomes an issue, but with the um, ring donut magnets that are, or sorry, not the ring donut magnets, well, yes, a little bit of those, but more specifically the ring plasma or the donut plasma, it spins in a certain direction, but also um, it rotates from the inside out. So basically from the center of the hole, it goes out towards the outer perimeter of the outside of the plasma. And I'm pretty sure which direction it spins influences which way it goes in or out, depending on... There's a lot of physics involved. <laughs> I'm not going to, um, you know, explain all of it because this is mostly for people who already know um, because, you know, they're telling us all this cool stuff and everything, but their ideas on plasma are, I don't want to say limited. They're more centralized because they have their ideas and they're working towards their stuff and all of these other companies are keeping basically everything a secret unless it's a science institution like um the liver baltimore reactor which was through the college i believe um which then they will you know it's a research paper so they will actually send it but all the private companies that are working on fusion they're probably not going to tell us anytime soon like how they do their fusion because they want to be the company that provides that energy to the future and profits off of it, which is why they're spending so much money on it now, literally billions of dollars. Um, but yeah, this is just, you know, Helion, Livermore, whatever. You guys want to do more research? Build one of these. The reason I want them to build one of these, I don't have the money to do that. It's probably not going to come to me anywhere in the next two decades and, and probably after that as well. Um, even if I become a renowned scientist, which is probably not going to happen. Um, and also because you guys already have the data that I don't have. I want to be testing these reactors. I want to be building these reactors. I want to be improving them. I want to be miniaturizing them so that we can use them as batteries in all sorts of electronics. Um, you know, most people would say that's dangerous, but uh, so is a lithium ion battery that just blows up. And you could say, well, this could be potentially much more powerful and hazardous. Well, yeah, but also you could build them much, much, much more smaller and get much, much more energy out of them. So there's, there's a silver lining somewhere in there. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, this is mostly for Helion because... They already have the physics down on these donuts rings. Um, I do want them to try and use similar approaches to what I'm doing. 
I don't know how the chamber is going to be created though. I did show like how you can do it. So it's kind of like curved magnets that keep the plasma in and then you have the quantum magnet, of course. Um, yeah, and then you have it spinning clockwise or counterclockwise. So yeah, um, a lot of physics, but um, I think I think this is the right way to go towards it because even if we create like small balls of plasma fusion, they're not guaranteed to last a while. Like yes, fusion, if we make sustained fusion, um, the problem is um, the fuel that we have to supply because the reactions don't continue and there there's not as many reactions as there are obviously in the core of the sun um and it does affect us and how we build our reactors because we have to take into account that um i do think this reactor is going to take an insane amount of energy so i don't think it's feasible with all the research we have right now um on a large scale but on a small scale like you could probably build one of these and make it like the size of a water bottle or something um like literally it just needs to have a sustained reaction and then you have well infinite plasma because we already have the ignition part we already figured out how to ignite plasma using lasers specifically and a pellet to create basically pulse fusion um so my next you know sort of thing for that would be now we just need to sustain it and we solved our fusion crisis you know there's still fine tuning needing to do, be done with the whole reactor wall slowly tearing apart the whole energy conversion and yeah just Smaller stuff, but they're still technically big problems. Um, but yeah, just wanted to talk to you guys about that because that is the second part. And I also want to, you know, message for heat for um, fusion, private fusion companies. You know, here you go. Here's another idea for a fusion reactor and um, different ways to control plasma. I have done experiments in high school and in college with plasma guns and magnets and. Um, it's called radiators. Sorry, uh, not radiators. What the hell is it called? It's a thing inside a microwave called again micron. No, micro microtron. I don't think that's what it's called. It's I'm pretty sure it's tron something. Microwave apparatus? I don't know. Oh, what was it called? Magnetron? Was it called a magnetron? Wait, wait, wait here. Magnetron. Yeah, okay, so this thing. Um, creates an electric field. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the thing that heats up your food. Efficient radiation, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's basically what it looks like. Super dangerous, you know, <laughs> microwave radiation. Yeah, but it's fun to play with. And um, it creates a magnetic field, which is what I use to shoot my plasma um, really fast and really far. Fortunately, I don't have any videos because they were all on my iPhone. Um, I have like a random post that I did one time in high school for a project. Uh, if I can find Instagram, um, but yeah, I just used the butane torch, took it apart, put two plastic water bottles together, and then you know did some uh, some cool stuff, I guess, but not as cool as I wanted it to be. I'm gonna end this video very soon. Um, so yeah, so here it is. Yeah, two bottles shooting stuff out, and then all those lights at the front are controlling the voltage and gas flow. I did some Arduino stuff, but yeah, that's that was the gun I made. Um, 
And yeah, that's uh, everything I have for you guys. So yeah, thank you guys for watching AOG Gaming. If you're enjoying the content, please like and subscribe. Really shows your support, helps me out, keeps you up to date with my content. 58 subscribers and going strong last time we checked. So you guys are amazing. Keep going. And um, yeah, thank you for guys for watching. And hopefully this will inspire some other engineers or scientists out there to make new methods for or create new methods for um, making fusion a reality. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys later.